Many people have heard this idea. The dean looks at the freshman class and says, look at the student to your left. Look at the student to your right. One of you will not graduate. Well, I've thought about that. That's a terrible thing to say to young people. But the fact is only somewhere between 50 and 60 percent of those who start college actually graduate. Imagine what we'd be saying if we were talking about people who go to hospitals, that only 50 to 60 percent are successful, right? You know, you go in and you got a, a 60 percent chance of living. I mean, I mean, it would be unacceptable, just unacceptable. I did enjoy high school. I took AP classes. I graduated with honors, and I ended up just going to a community college. And it was just, it was a hard time for me. So I kind of just like fell back pretty much and just dropped out of school. Good morning. All I needed was just that tiny push, like just a tiny nudge to direct me or maybe a support system or a, a counselor that I could really talk to about, here are my challenges, and that was non-existent. I feel like in America, we have a one-size-fits-all system. It's like, hey, take this or leave it. You know, either prosper or fall through the cracks of the system. And I fell through those cracks. We're simply failing half of people who go to college. They look different than past generations of students. They have different needs and different experiences. A lot of them are first generation. And the kicker is we're facing a shortfall of college degrees in this country of somewhere between 11 and 16 million students by 2025. Boston is my home, it's my heart. Never lived out of state or anything like that. I remember seeing my philosophy teacher at UMass Boston at the train one day, and he's like, man, you were the hardest F that I ever had to give. And that struck a chord with me because although I and other students like me have the ambition, have the drive, we just didn't fit into that stereotypical college mold. It hurt me. You know, um, because I want him to get further than I got. You know, because as a parent, you always want your kids to be better than you. Me and people coming from my background, a lot of the things that we have to worry about is, oh, how am I going to get lunch, you know? How are the bills going to get paid? How are they going to get money to survive day in and day out? So a normal day, I'll wake up around 6.30, 7 o'clock, and then work a nine to five most days. Sometimes it drags on and I'm at work until like six or seven o'clock. And it's been hectic the past few weeks, right? Because like, I'm trying to balance school, I'm trying to balance work, and there's so much going on. Now my main thing is like, I can burn out. So like, how, how can I avoid that? You can like really stress yourself out, mm -hmm. but you gotta try to manage your time as best as possible for every task that you have at hand. There's a lot of stuff that kind of hold me back. I would say the most difficult thing right now is probably my work. Start work at 10 p.m. I'm off by seven in the morning. I work in the freezer. Yeah, I'm in the freezer, so it's kind of like, it's, uh, <clears throat> it kind of sucks. My parents came from Mexico. They got their own business, cleaning houses. They just been doing that all their lives. I remember one time like, I was cleaning a house with my parents when I was younger. 
and after we finished, the lady, she's, she told my mom, you have a sweet kid, and then she said, one day, you know, you're gonna be cleaning my son's house, you know? Has pretty much continued the business as my mom. And to me, that was just like, oh, like, I, I don't wanna do that, you know? I don't wanna keep that stereotype alive, I guess. That really shaped the person I am today. I wanted to get a degree, you know, get a good job, do something with my life. My parents came to America for a better life. I guess a part of me kind of want, wants to do it for them too, to make them proud of me. We have Audrey and Andrew and Kennedy, my niece. Growing up, I knew that I wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. My favorite book to read is... There's my heart. Mm -hmm. I knew that I needed a degree to get there. I just never got there, but that was my idea. Morning. How are you doing? It's going to be 2.45, please, out of five. The How's biggest challenge today? being an adult learner is that you've got your career and your work, you've got your family, all counting on you, and then you've got the challenges of meeting deadlines for papers and finals, and finding that balance is the most challenging part. With school and work and balancing home life, it's been very difficult at times. We're in this as a team. It's a group effort, and it takes a concerted effort from all individuals to come together and really make a commitment. Was there an occasion? Nothing at it. My motivation was basically I want my wife to get this degree because it's been something that she's been pursuing for such a long time and been putting off for so long. The culmination, the end of this journey, when she walks across that stage, that feeling of empowerment and success and everything that goes into it is just going to feel overwhelming for both of us. The challenge is to help the public understand that a large percentage of students in college are not the typical 18 to 22 year olds. These are older students who are working they are raising kids, and we need to address all the challenges they face. I think of this as the real challenge facing American higher education is how do we do a better job for students, no matter what their background, and get them through to a meaningful college degree that fundamentally changes the trajectory of their life and their family's life. We need different models that will lead to different certifications for people to get jobs. We do want as many broadly, liberally educated people as possible, but we have to understand it should not be a cookie cutter approach where everybody comes through and in four years they're finished. It doesn't work. So we need to rethink the model of four years you're in and you're out. That is 20th century thinking. 